Our next question, question number two, is the amounts x sub one of t and x sub two of t of salt in two brine tanks satisfy the differential equations. The derivative of x sub one with respect to t is negative k sub one times x sub one. And the derivative of x sub two with respect to t is equal to k sub one times x sub one minus k sub two times x sub two where k sub i is equal to r divided by v sub i for every i being either one or two in this case. We're going to let v sub one be 20 gallons, v sub two be eight gallons, r be 10 gallons per minute, x sub one of zero to be 50 pounds and x sub two of zero to be zero pounds. We want to solve for x sub one of t and x sub two of t. So because of that, we should probably get our values of k first. So k sub one, that would just be r divided by v sub one. In our case, that's 10 divided by 20, or one half, or 0.5. k sub two, this would be r divided by v sub two. In our case, this would be 10 divided by 50. It's gonna be 10 divided by 80. This will give us just well, one eighth, which as a fa as a decimal amount will be zero point one two five. So we could then rewrite our differential equations above as x sub one prime is equal to negative zero point five times x sub one, and x sub two prime is equal to zero point five times x sub one minus 0 0.125 times x sub two. As a, as a system of matrices and vectors and whatnot, this can be rewritten as, this would be 0 0.5, negative 0.5, excuse me, down here is just 0.5, up here is zero, and over here is negative 0 0.125 times our vector x is equal to the solutions of 50 and 0. And we could get our um, eigenvalues from this by subtracting lambda on this diagonal and finding the determinant. The, the determinant of a minus lambda i in this case. This will give us negative 0.5 minus lambda times negative 0 0.125 minus lambda. And that would give us be equal to zero. And since we have, when we multiply 0 0.5 times zero across the off diagonal, we get a zero. There's no real reason to even attempt to um, multiply that out and then refactorize it since we just have two factors here. This implies for us that lambda sub one is going to be negative 0.5. And our lambda sub two is going to give us negative 0 0.125, which means we have our two cases based on our two lambdas. Lambda sub one being equal to negative 0 0.5. Carrying that out by subtracting negative 0 0.5 from each value on our main diagonal. This will produce a zero in this position. This one down here is still 0 0.5. We still have a zero up here. And down here, a negative 0.125 minus negative 0.5 will give us positive 0 0.375 times our eigenvector v sub one is supposed to be equal to the zero vector. So from this, we could go to solve this and it is going to give us 0 0.5, the top, the top row here, it's going to be all zeros. No point in writing that one down. But from this, we get 0 0.5 times a plus 0 
three, seven, five times B is supposed to be equal to zero. How does that happen? Well, if A was negative 0 0.375 and B was 0 0.5. That's how we would go about doing that one. Likewise, for case number two, our second value of eigenvalue for this was negative 0 0.125. Subtracting that from our main diagonal here, we are going to get negative 0.5 minus negative 0.125 will give us negative 0 0.375. A zero is zero here, and this is 0.5. Times our second eigenvector, v sub 2, is equal to the zero vector again. This one will give us two equations this time, but notice they're both in the same position. So the two that we get is negative 0 0.375 times a is equal to zero and 0 0.5 times a is equal to zero. Both of those imply that a is zero and b can be any number. It's gonna be arbitrary in this case because well, it's not even used. So why don't we just give it some value, let's say one, make it nice for us. So based on these then, we have our general, well, before we solve for the coefficients, we have ourselves, and let me write it down here, just so it's a bit easier to imagine. We have x of t is equal to c sub 1 times our eigenvector. So in this case, negative 0 0.375 and then 0 0.5 times e to the negative 0 0.5 times t plus c sub 2 times our other eigenvector 0 1 uh, times e to the negative 0 0.125 times t and that will give us our two equations x sub 1 of t in this case is just going to be negative 0 0.375 times c sub 1 times e to the negative 0 0.5 times t. And y, um, it's going to be x sub 2 of t, is going to be 0 0.5 times c sub 1 times e to the negative 0 0.5 times t plus c sub 2 times e to the negative 0 0.125 times t. So then from this we would use our initial conditions here. x sub 1 of 0 will just give us negative 0. 375 times c sub 1 is equal to 50, which then gives us that c sub 1 has to be, as a fraction, negative 400 over 3. And then x sub 2 of 0, this would give us 0 0.5 times c sub 1 plus c sub 2. But we already know what c sub 1 is. Why don't we put that in there? Negative 400 over 3 times 0. 0.5. This would give us negative 200 over 3. Plus c sub 2 is supposed to be equal to 0. So because of that, this implies that c sub 2 has to be positive 200 over 3. 
which then therefore means our two solutions are going to be the following. X sub one of T is equal to, so for this one, right, we had negative 0.375 times negative 400 over three, tossing that into our calculator gives us 50 times E to the negative 0 0.5 times T. Likewise, for X sub two of T, uh, we would have 0 0.5 times negative 400 over three. That would give us for this 200 over three times um, C sub two is 200 over three. We are factoring out that 200 over three in this particular one to make 200 over three times negative E to the negative 0 0.5 times T plus E to the negative 0 0.125 times T as our second solution for this. Thank you.